Hello my dear friends, in today's video we will find out is it possible to install Windows 35 on a new modern PC. Let's go! In the previous video I was trying to install Windows 88 on this PC. There will be spoilers now, so if you haven't watched it yet, you definitely should do it. All links will be in the description. Windows 35 was released almost 30 years ago, so is it possible to run it on a real modern PC? Let's find out. We have Intel i9, 4900K, Asus Z790H motherboard, NVIDIA RTX 4070, 32GB of DDR5 memory, and PCI Express 4.0 NVMe SSD with 2TB of capacity. Ok, we have already succeeded with Windows 88 installation on this PC, but what will happen if we will try to run Windows 88 on this PC? Let's find out. So as you might remember, we already managed to do this with Windows 88. Yes, Windows 88 actually can run on Intel 14900K with Z790 motherboard, which is pretty unbelievable. First of all, we need an installation image. I have already found one. If you are too lazy to look for it, you can get the image and full installation guide on my Patreon page. I upload all the images I use in my videos along with detailed installation instructions. You will also find a stable Windows 11 LTS image there. All the links will be in the description. So here is the image. Windows 35 OSR 2. We will follow the same steps as we did with Windows 88. Write the image to USB drive, boot from it and run setup. The system shows the Windows 35 logo. We press enter and just like with Windows 88, we run the setup command. Scan disk appears and hangs, which I think is expected on modern hardware. It simply doesn't work correctly. Thankfully, there is a workaround. We add special parameters to the setup command to skip scan disk. But then we get another error, not enough RAM to start the installation. Which is funny, considering this PC has 32GB of DDR5. Windows 35 is extremely picky about memory, because this old memory driver, IMM.sys, can't handle such large amounts. Back in 1996, 8 to 16 MB was normal, and 32 MB of RAM was a luxury. So the driver just freaks out. The fix is the same one we used with Windows 88. It's a modern memory driver called XMGR. You simply copy it to the root of the USB drive, edit config.sys, replace HMM with XMGR, and then press save, reboot, and run setup again. And this time it works. Setup launches properly. The mouse behaves strangely because there are no USB drivers. But the USB keyboard surprisingly works. The installation begins, but this is only the first stage, basically just unpacking Windows files. The second stage is where most of the errors usually appear. After the first reboot, we get a familiar memory-related error, the same one we saw during Windows 88 installation. Windows 35 and 98 simply cannot work with large amounts of RAM. The solution is rid of our lowest patch called PatchMap which increases the supported RAM up to 4 GB. It helped with Windows 88, so we apply it here as well. Then another error appears. The vCache issue. We saw this during Windows 88 installation too, thanks to a subscriber who shared a fix. It worked for someone who managed to boot Windows 88 on a Z690 with Intel 12 700K and 32 GB of RAM. You need to copy the fix to the USB drive, edit autoexec.bat, add the fix commands, and reboot. But this time we hit something new, the iOS error. This has never happened before with any Windows 9X installation. Turns out, Windows 35 simply cannot run on extremely high CPU frequencies. Older CPUs run at 100 to 200 MHz, while this PC runs at nearly 6 GHz due to overclocking. Windows 35 just can't handle that. Fortunately, there is a special patch called Fix CPU. But for our version Windows 35 OSR 2, it must be run inside an already installed system. Installing Windows 35 from USB confused the patch, since it couldn't detect the C drive. So I extracted the patch manually using 7-zip and replaced the necessary system files myself. But that still didn't fix the issue. Eventually I decided to install Windows 35 on an old HP PC, apply all the patches there, then create an image of the patched system and restore it. 
to USB drive using acronyms. This required burning a physical CD using a specific disk type because the drive refused to read the CDRW disk. After several attempts, a slow 40 minute format and the hard drive making some very suspicious noises. The installation completed. I applied the patches, created an image, copied it to a USB drive and tried booting it on a modern PC. But then a new error message appeared. Invalid device number 3, service B. Clearly not good. Since Windows 88 worked perfectly on this system, I tested the patched Windows 35 image on another PC, Intel i9-9900K and Z390 motherboard. There I got the VDD error again, which we already knew how to fix by using an older GPU. And surprisingly, it worked flawlessly. Windows 35 runs perfectly on Intel i9-9900K and Z390 motherboard. I kept experimenting on Z790 system, editing config.sys, autoexec.bat, system.ini, even BIOS settings, I mean disabling cores, limiting CPU frequency to 800 MHz, and disabling PCI features, but nothing helped. The same error kept appearing. Since it's impossible to install Windows 35 on Intel i9-4900K, let's try to install it on Intel i9-9900K. Let's see how it works. And great, Windows 35 setup begins. Yes, I know that Intel i9-9900K, it's not a modern CPU. But anyways, the fact that it's possible to run Windows 35 on this type of CPU, this is incredible. Solely because the motherboard has a PS2 port, we are able to control the keyboard. On a modern motherboard, we wouldn't be able to do that, even if Windows 35 managed to start. And go next. and Windows 35 was successfully installed. Now, as you can see, it tries to install drivers. I don't think it's possible, because Windows 95 drivers just are not exist for this type of motherboard. Ok, we're in the system now. First of all, let's check system properties. And as you can see, Intel 9900K is recognized as a Pentium Pro. Well, nothing surprising. After all, Windows 95 knows nothing about modern processors. Go next, let's check device manager. Unfortunately, without the chipset drivers, none of the connected devices here will work. But standard display driver here, as you can see, works properly. Let's go ahead, let's open AIDA32. It's an old version of AIDA64. Of course, because it's an old app, it can't recognize motherboard's name, but it recognizes CPU frequency, 3600 megahertz. What about internet? Unfortunately, we won't be able to access the internet in any way, because even if we connect a Node network card, we still won't be able to use it due to the lack of chipset drivers. Go next, let's try to play Blood. And it also works properly. By the way, this is one of the greatest games ever made. You can check the full walkthrough on my gaming channel. All links will be in the description. Go next. Let's try to play an old classic, Doom. And as you can see, it's working well. Amazing. Let's go ahead. Let's try to play Half-Life Uplink. Will it work? Um, unfortunately, no. It's all because of the lack of GPU drivers. So what's the final conclusion? The problem is the modern Z790 chipset. Windows 35 simply doesn't understand the hardware and load drivers and just crashes. Even if we could somehow get it to boot, we still wouldn't be able to use a keyboard or mouse, because our motherboard doesn't have PS2 ports and, of course, chipset drivers. Anything connected via PCI Express slot also wouldn't work. But since Windows 35 does run an Intel i9-9900K, I made a full image of the newly installed system with all the patches applied. You can write it to any USB drive or SSD and try to boot Windows 35 instantly on your modern PC without spending hours patching it manually. All images, patches and instructions are available on my Patreon page. It's a nice way to support the channel. All the links will be in the description. Funny, but there is a way to run Windows 35 on modern CPUs. 
one YouTuber managed to boot it on a modern CPU, but only on a budget motherboard, which means that Windows 35 on Intel Anon 14900K is theoretically possible, but only if you pair it with a low-end motherboard. In the next video, we'll try to install Windows Millennium on a real modern PC. If you enjoyed this video, press the like button, leave a comment and subscribe. See you later, bye.